another classic WFO CJ7. Um, this Jeep has just about everything of ours on it. And it's not something that we just built. Uh, over the years, Trent has been doing a little bit here, a little bit there. It's spring over on Rubicon Express, inch and a half spring over springs. Uh, the front end stretched a little bit. The rear end is stretched a little bit, but not a ton. Genrite flares, front and rear. Uh, got the old school worn rock sliders on here. They don't make those anymore. Those are kind of cool. We got some 38 inch Mickey Thompson's on this bad boy. And you look at the aspect ratio of the tire to rim and you go, those aren't 17s, are they? That kind of dates this rig, right? So these are uh, the old outlaw style rims, 15 inch bead locks with 38 inch Mickey Thompson's by 15 inch rim. Now, to support that kind of tire, you're right on the edge. You know, we usually say Dana 44 front, 37s and smaller, Dana 60 front, 38s to 40s. Well, guess what? He's got a Dana 60 in this bad boy. We built this axle about 15 years ago. So this is a Kingpin Chevy Dana 60. It is narrowed on both sides because he's right around 60 to 61 inches wide. If you really look up underneath there, you can see the hydraulic assist ram all the way in the back of the axle. And notice just the drag link here, no tie rod. So what we did on this one, because it's the Dana 60, like we do on all the uh, Leaf Spring Dana 60 rigs, as you can see over here, it has our double high steer arms. So the Kingpin double high steer arms, drag link across the front, tie rod on the back, our, our uh, Shock towers right there, has 12 inch travel shocks in the front. Important to have the bumps in there still and these raised bump pads so that the tie rod and ram doesn't come up and hit the oil pan. Um, this is how we really like to do it with a leaf spring setup with the Kingpin Dana 60s. While I was underneath here, you can see the PSC steering box. You got our WFO Concepts shackle reversal mount right here for CJs. So it is shackle reversal. Um, Something a little different on Trent's is when he got the frame plates, they come extra long. He actually extended his frame about three inches. You can see here's the spring hanger, here's the bumper out front. So by extending the frame, it allowed the winch to mount nice with good cooling into the grill. And uh, just on this go around, we moved the power steering cooler to right here. So this is a PSC uh, finned power steering cooler and it's a double pass so the the inlet and outlet are right here sneak down through the hole ends up really clean high lift jack louvers on the hood here and we'll get back to that as we go forward got some pod lights up here um kind of that classic black with the chrome hinges like we were doing back in the 90s on the cjs uh, and then with the little new school with the gen right flares so gen right front fenders and then gen right rear fenders. And uh, the axle is still bolted into the factory spring hanger on the frame here, which means you're pretty much stock wheelbase in the rear. It's got a 20 gallon rear tank. A while back, we went ahead and did our full cross member and full skid plate kit on this one. I think actually Mitch might've built this one about 10 years ago. This Jeep happens to have a turbo 350 um, transmission in it. Here's the real deal. Take a look at that. Look at that big boy. Low pinion, Dana 60, 35 spline, three and eighth inch tubes. Same Rubicon Express spring over springs in the rear. We got the Wheelwood four piston disc brake setup with parking brake on here. Uh, one of our old school aluminum diff covers. Nice heavy gas tank skid. I believe that Trent actually built this rear bumper with a swinging tire rack with a cool latching and pin setup. Uh, to hold his super swamper old school 35 inch spare tire. You look inside this thing and pretty classic CJ, right? So he happens to have a Genrite cage with aluminum top in it. You look up in there, you can see the aluminum, makes a little rattling noise right now going down the road. The gauges, the dash are all pretty classic. Um, ARB lockers front and rear, and uh, you can see the twin stick knobs of the Atlas sticking up right there. And then the Tuffy console, Tuffy center console. Inside gives you that old school classic CJ look um, with the exception of the Sidewinder automatic transmission shifter that we just put in. So we got that shifter from wide open designs. Um, so we just added that to it. The real deal, what we wanna show you. So this Jeep for the last 15 years has had a Chevy V8 in it. 
Started with a regular 350 carbureted, uh, went to a 383 stroker. Um, no matter what, on the Rubicon Trail, electric fans, pusher, puller, uh, whatever was going on, he was always overheating. Basically, the reason it's at WFO on this round is the only way that we could figure out how to make it overheat, make it overheat. Make it overheat. And now, a quick word from our sponsor today, Logic. What I think Trevor meant to say is that we swapped an LS into this Jeep to prevent overheating, not help cause it. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. It's changed the engine out to something that we know always stays cool. So this is a uh, 5.3 from BD Turnkey Engines. And this has the uh, Texas Speed Stage 2 cam in it. So we took the 383 out, we took all the electric fans out, we took all of the um, wiring that went along with the electric fans, which is, was a ton of it, relays, um, temperature uh, pickups. It just muddied, muddied up the whole thing. Um, and he had a pretty nice aluminum radiator but it just didn't mount right and it didn't work right. So we took all that out, kept the Turbo 350, put the 5.3 in. Well, right when we dropped the 5.3 in, we realized that the motor was not lining up with the radiator. And at that point, we noticed that he had a two inch body lift. So mechanical fan lining up with the radiator picked up two inches, wasn't gonna work for us. So of course, we're not a, we're not a uh, fan uh, of body lift. So we took the two inch body lift out, which allowed this fan to line back up with the radiator. And then Doug went ahead and built a, a shroud, just like we always do. So mechanical clutch fan with a shroud. Uh, and then we went with the advanced adapters, CJLS radiator. Um, got it all mounted in here. The top radiator hose comes right across here, mounts to the shroud. Uh, everything is working good, runs ice cold. No more getting hot. No more electric fans, no more relays, no more wires, everybody, everywhere. Totally cleaned it up. Uh, we mounted the, the factory GM computer right on the firewall. And then right above it here is the relays and uh, fuses for the BD turnkey setup, which is how it comes. It's just a power and ground hookup. Hydroboost brakes on this thing. That was one of our projects a couple years ago. So with an automatic and a V8, big tires, brakes are super important barely touch the brakes, it works awesome. Um, this thing has PSC, uh, high pressure pump, reservoir, hydro assist steering. Look over here, Trent went ahead and added a hot shower on this thing. So this is the heat exchanger, electric pump, stick it in the lake when you're camping and uh, you got your hot shower. Got rid of all that big old school Chevy stuff, put a simple little LS in there. I think we're probably gonna double the fuel mileage, half the cooling needed. No more overheating, no more ratchet strapping your hood to the roof of the Jeep while you're on the trail. Uh, I really look forward to seeing them on the Jeepers Jamboree this year. So another CJ out the door with the uh, final touches it needs. Just a new heartbeat.